Hey Gregius, Robo here! And we are so glad to finally be able to welcome you guys to the final build episode of our Octobot cosplay series. At last we can go and paint all of the pieces of the cosplay and get everything ready for assembly. So I think you guys have waited a long enough time already, so let's get started. Yep, let's start this long awaited episode with the painting of the fists. Starting with a nice black coat for the solid fist. We got really lucky with how good the weather was that day, since you can literally see the wet paint dry during the duration of the video. And so, after every nook and cranny has been spray painted, we continue with the black spray paint for the feet of the Octobot. Next up was the shell for the body. And with all of that black paint done, we can do the silver next. Coating all of the armor pieces for both of the fists. Then we got the armor panels for the crotch armor. This is then the same brown that's also used for the speakers. And also the armor panels for the feet and the legs. Then with a lot of the spray painting done, we can start to remove some of the masking tape for the parts like the elbows. And then came the dreaded Solid Fist. Since we had already spent an entire day just applying all of this masking tape, 
And then, once we started to actually remove those pieces, we got the realization that many of the paper layers of the faux board kept coming loose with the removal of this masking tape. So, safe to say, this needed a lot of touch-ups. But, with this painting done, we can do some of the first assembly for this video. Starting with the supports for the upper arm to fix them to the elbows. While the glue on that dries, we can then also remove the final layers of masking on the armor of the legs. And with that done, we can combine the elbow with the upper arms. With some support blocks on the inside of the elbows. This combined with the wooden reinforcements will then make sure that the arm will hang onto the body with enough support. These will then be attached to the balls that we've mounted on the ends of both arms. Although a little different per hand. For the solid one, we can easily mount it to the hand while it's still off of the upper arm. Next up are the armor pieces for the legs. With the sand brown color added, we hot glue and screw the pieces to their placement on the feet. All except for the big toes. Since for these, we had the slits on the front to be able to attach and remove them to allow for easier access to the shoes within the feet. And while we're already working on the armor of the feet, we can nicely continue with the armor for the upper leg. To work on both the shins, And to add this knee piece. Not forgetting about the support on the inside. With the armor glued on, the next step will be to screw on the aluminium frame and to glue it to the upper leg. We can then easily slide the piece over the aluminium and glue it in place with contact cement. Now that we have this round of assembly done, we can finally add some of the wear and tear to the Octobot. With techniques like this dry brushing for some silver around the edges of the filters. or by spraying this mix of watered down black, brown and red acrylic paints. Then wiping it away with a towel to leave this oily texture in the nooks and crannies of the armor for a more wetted look. And these techniques are then used up to 11 for the armor pieces of the legs. Since in-game these are the most wetter parts of the Octobot, we needed to reflect this in our cosplay of the Mac. So we had already added a lot of silver dry brushing on the base of the legs and the feet. And we continue this with a round of this rust mixture of brown, yellow and red acrylic paints mixed with some baking soda for a texture that we spread all over the armor pieces. Then with this rust dry, we can then go over all of the edges with a silver for a more chipped paint look that's also depicted in game. But sadly we had some complications with the legs, since the butterfly nuts were actually getting quite hard to reach to be able to lock the legs in place. So we had to improvise and cut the joint of the ankles and shorten it to allow for the end caps on both ends to be slid out. This will then allow us easier access to the inside. 
Luckily for us, this system worked a treat. And with a little bit of black paint, it even blended back with the rest of the parts pretty well. Then we had one more piece to paint, the power cord on the back. So with us having already added this copper collar on the inside of the plugs, we now need to close off these with some cardboard inserts and then we take this piece outside and add the sand brown like the rest of the cosplay. Then after the painting we add this flexible tube to be the core that leads back to the main body of the Octobot. Speaking of the main body, we can now finally receive its shell with the two big pieces for the lower half. And then the rest will also be filled as needed. Which results in this nice enclosed space. Oh boy, I'm so glad I'm not claustrophobic. Although, if, if I was claustrophobic, that would also not have been a very great thing with the big man cosplay. But since this enclosed space is still gonna get a little hot over time, we did have the foresight to order some fans to blow some cool air into the suit. Which are going to be glued right here in the back. Then we have a little bit more cutting work to do for the holes of the arms. And with that and a nice matching coat of black for the top half of the shell, we get this big job to add the silver scratches over all of the weathered parts of the shell. While these are drying, I took a little look at the back, but it still felt a little barren. So I thought of a custom part to add, by making use of this cheap LED strip with some orange crepe paper. I get to fill this plastic container with these orange transparent marbles to create these power egg batteries to be the power source of the Octobot. or to make smart use of the crepe paper, like I did to fill the middle of these small little containers. But yeah, for the big one, we still need to order like 300 more beads. But at least, the base of the big container can already be glued in place while we wait on that order. And we can also work on other jobs, like mounting the front speakers. By bending these former 90 degree metal braces, we can then angle the speakers as needed to be able to mount them across the front of the DJ studio. Drilling each speaker in place instead of gluing them to be able to remove them for transport. After these, it was time to add the crotch armor to the front. Starting with this big middle piece that was already hard enough to get in place, but still doable.
but it would not be a DJ setup without some lights. So we had to make loads of these LED strips, which we wired up and soldered and added some custom code. And all of this work is then combined with the sanded plastic sheets for diffusing the lights. Using our heat gun to bend the sheets over target. And then cooling them down with some water in a spray bottle. Then checking the angles, after which we can then release them from the holder. This is then repeated for each of the five panels. With those panels done and two LED strips behind each of them, all of this work is then combined for this amazing light show. Complete with custom light animations that I've referenced from other appearances of the Octobots. That I can cycle through as needed using buttons on the inside of the Octobot. Now that we have these lights working, I can also add the roof and the back to the body to be able to combine these power plugs that lead from the vents of the roof to the power cord on the back. Finally, we've also received our glass marbles. So it was time to add the containers to the back. Starting with this big one that we squeezed into the holder Followed up with these two smaller ones that are placed over the rest of the ridge of the back. And to finish the back, I also added both our channel name and our Instagram tag to make it a little bit easier to let people know where they can find us when we are walking around with this Mac during a con. Now we can also finish the roof with the intention of the antenna, with its 90 degree twist system. Yeah, so we will do a good presentation once we actually take the Octobot to a con, because we would love to show it off here, but to be fair, our, the roof of the Octobot is already reaching the roof of our workshop, so I need a little bit more space for that. But back to the project, and while we're still in a good assembly rhythm, we can also add both of the arms to the frame using some screws that I have mounted on the inside of the Octobot to go through the upper arms. But hey, it worked out in the end. And after weaving it in between old speakers, next up were the supports for the roll cage. Made with some 40mm PVC, lots of couplers, and its leads that go over the upper arms. Then we did manage to add the solid hand to the left arm, but the forces at the ends of the construction showed us that some of the connections weren't strong enough. So some rope lines were added to help hold up the hands themselves to hopefully fix this problem. And that wasn't the only thing, cause next the pinky broke at the hinge while we were carrying around the moving hand. And that's not all! The control board of the front speakers then also broke out of nowhere! But even all of this didn't stop us for long, since we still have the biggest part of the Octobot to test, the legs. Though for this we did need to remove some of the loose accessories from the body. Stuff like the filters, then the arms were next, moving them around very carefully this time. And this was then finished with the removal of the roll cage. Then came the first test to add the legs underneath the body. But moving this around was already pretty tough. So first to go were those hinged crutch pieces. 
which we also later re-added as permanent attached pieces. While we had these loose, we did finally manage to screw on both of the legs. standing was a whole different story. Which also made me realize that this was probably not gonna work out without some supports in the front. Especially when stuff like the hands, the filters, etc. still needed to be attached. So, a little break with some trigonometry and some other calculations, I was able to make a support frame to add to the front to help with the weight and stability of the suit. Having these uprights to go into the suit to support it from the bottom of the DJ studio. And then for some more stability, I also cut one more beam for the front. Then I can place it down and add the glue and screw it from the bottom to the rest of the cards. Then I used some screws to connect it to the frame of the Octobots. With a broken drill bit on top of everything that already happened. But as the final addition, to also make sure that it doesn't fall apart, I also add a crossbeam to finish up the cart. Now all that's left to do is to make it blend in a little bit more of the rest of the suit by adding a coat of black spray paint to the cart. While that dries, I finally add the wasabi sticks in place from our very first YouTube shard. Lastly, I add both the support frame and the legs underneath the Octobot. And after three more tries of problems around the heights of the support frame in the legs. We can at last introduce, after 4 months of research and perhaps 8 months of work, that we finally, 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 FINALLY finished our biggest Splatoon project ever, the Octobot King L3GS cosplay suit.
Ah, <sighs> finally, it is done. Dutch Comic Con, here we come. What the heck? What do you mean Dutch Comic Con was already three weeks ago? Did we make? Did we not make the call again? Dang it! Ah, <sighs> well. Looks like we're going to have to save the Octobot for Dutch Comic Con Winter Edition 2023. Yeah. We'll just have to see. I'm just glad that for now we finally finished the Octobot. And can close off this project together with you guys. At least we'll now have a next con to look out for. And to plan a video for. And we're even thinking of doing a full photo shoot of the finalized Octobot. So you guys can also look out for that. Because I think after all of the work that has gone into it, I think it's earned that, at least. But after all of these months, I think we deserve to do some smaller projects again. Oh, I've missed it doing custom amiibos. So, we'll hope you guys will look out for those, together with the two of us. But that's going to be all from us for now. Keep those creative gears turning, and we will see you guys in the next video.